Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm in my home simulator on OptiShot 2. In this video, this is part one of a two-part series on how to improve your iron accuracy and distance control. So in this video, we'll be solely working on the driving range aspect of OptiShot 2, and I'll be sharing with you some of my practice techniques and what I've been working on consistently now for a while, all geared towards improving iron accuracy and my distance control. The reason this is so important to improve in your golf game and ultimately lowering your scores is if we can understand why the golf ball travels as far as it does and have some kind of control over the factors that go into that, ultimately it will lead to closer proximity to the hole, which leads to more birdie putts, which in turn leads to, I think you got it, lower scores. So now before we start practice technique number one, I want you to go ahead and select the white flag on the driving range feature. On mine, it says it's 122 yards away. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pick the club that goes that chosen distance. And before we actually get in deep into the game where you actually challenge yourself and really work on this, is I just want you to spend 15 to 20 minutes just hitting golf balls, hit golf balls towards that target. But what I want you to record is the distance the ball traveled in correlation to the miles per hour. So miles per hour, distance in yards. We're basically trying to build a database of numbers. So how far does a 65 mile an hour pitching wedge swing go? How far does a 68 mile an hour pitching wedge swing go? 72 miles per hour, 75 and so on. We're trying to build that database. So when you get out on the golf course and you have those maybe awkward numbers, let's say you hit your pitching wedge 115 yards and it's 110, but you can't go long. How much, what does that feel like? What does that equate to swing speed wise? And if we can kind of build some muscle memory around these different kind of numbers, it's gonna to lead to more accurate orange shots. Okay, so your 15 to 20 minutes on the range is done. Hopefully you had two or three balls go different miles per hour and different distances and you started to see, okay, so my 65 mile an hour goes 100 yards, 69 goes 110, uh, 72 goes, let's say 116 and so on and so forth. So now here comes the first challenge. With your pitching wedge on the same flag, I want you to hit three balls. The first ball, I want you to swing at 68 miles per hour. Forget distance, you should already know about how far it's gonna go. Probably in that bunker. 68 miles per hour. Ball number two. I want you to swing, ramp it up a little bit, 72 miles per hour. Again, you should know what kind of distance that's gonna go. And then ball three, I want you to go for the hole. So it's 122 yards away. Let's equate that to a swing speed. For me, on this hole, I'm gonna have a go in a minute myself. So ball three at 122 yards is about 74 miles per hour. If you can go ahead and dial these numbers in, and if you can kind of get the feeling of what 68 feels like, what 72 feels like, you are gonna improve the accuracy of your irons and most certainly your distance control. Okay, so with all that being said, it's time to get started. Ball number one, 68 miles per hour. Sixty-seven. <clears throat> okay, so I was only one mile an hour short. Uh, it went 107 yards. Usually if I can get that extra mile an hour, it's gonna to equate to about two and a half, three yards. Um, so pretty happy with that. Ball number two, 72 miles per hour. Two mile an hour short there, uh, went 70 miles an hour, 113 yards. So I lost about four, five yards there. 
um, from what I, my target was. But we'll go ball number three. It's 122 yards and that equates to about 74, 75 miles per hour. So let's see if we can get it there. Well, that was the 72 that we needed. We'll just do one more at that final ball, 74 miles per hour. Really? Okay, there you can see my traces and my flights. So the first one I was off by, I think one mile an hour. The second one I was off by two miles an hour. Uh, third one I was off by two miles an hour. So it was still heading in the right direction. It was just going up in twos rather than the threes and the fours that I wanted. But yeah, that's kind of the idea. And, and now I'm kind of building this idea of, okay, if I swing it 75 miles an hour with a pitching wedge, it's going 124 yards, something like that. So. That information is so valuable out on the golf course, knowing what you can do uh, with the clubs in your bag. So this is an exercise you actually want to do all the way up to like the green flag on OptiShot 2, uh, using all your irons and kind of figure out what does 70 miles an hour with a nine iron, an eight iron, a seven iron, a six iron, what do they get you? Because with that, you'll get different ball flights. And you know, we're not always in the most perfect situations out on the golf course, sometimes trying to hit a six iron 120 yards is called for when you're trying to take it under a tree, something like that. Um, but having all these different shots, having it's a massive confidence booster knowing that you have all these different things in your locker that you can kind of use at your disposal. So OptiShot 2, using this system, this practice technique is a great tool to kind of broaden your bag, turning your, your bag of 14 clubs into almost 30, 40 having those different knockdown shots, having those different swing speeds uh, for each individual club is instrumental in improving your iron accuracy and distance control. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and we will see you soon for part two. Thanks very much.